Hey, welcome back. So it's a new day and a new episode. So we're going to jump back over to the front of the truck and figure out the lower shock mounts first. And then once those are in place, the bottom of the ORIs will have something to uh, be located to. And then uh, the challenging part is going to be the upper shock towers, especially on the driver's side. And let's take a peek at the potential plan. All right, so here are the front 12 inch ORIs. Um, let's see here. So they still use a standard half inch bolt to go through. The only difference is the width is 1.6 inches versus the common 1.5. So right off the bat, the mounts from Barnes four wheel drive are too narrow, not a big deal. I'm just going to slit them down the middle in the two pieces. Then I'll bolt them up snug using a ultra thin washer to give me a little bit of play once they're welded. No big deal. Um, this right here, I'm kind of laying out the shock mount pad. So the plan is on this truck, it's utilizing the Ford style uh, wedge radius arm setup. And with the James Duff long arm setup, it's got these really big knuckles around the wedges. And there's three bolt holes. This is normally where the lower spring uh, bucket is bolted to. So this is where the spring is, you know, pushing and pulling off the axle. And then normally the shocks are mounted over here. And there's a coil bucket and a shock mount. So the plan is to make some um, quarter inch pads, quarter inch thick pads, three and a quarter by I think five and a half. I always make things a tad oversized and then I can always shape them up nicely afterwards. So the plan is to make those pads, split these in half, weld them, tack them. It'll be a bolt-on shock mount utilizing at least two if not three of the holes. So one hole will definitely be in the center of the shock mount, of the ORI mount I mean. And then there's going to be at least one more if not two more depending on space. These two are kind of close. Once I cut this to make it wider, um, we'll see what happens here. This is the driver's side. So the radius arms kind of come on the wedges at an angle. So that's why the, the shock mount probably looks not even to the top of the head, but that's fine. So that's the bottom. Now the hard part on these Fords on the front is the driver's side frame. If you can see how it bumps out right here, wiggles out. There's a lot going on here. So this is going to be where I start. I'm going to start on the driver's side because the passenger side will be easier to, to match. It's going to take a little bit of time because um, obviously you don't ever want to overcut stuff because you can't always put stuff back. These are the towers I'd like to try to use. From Barnes four wheel drive, obviously they're going to be cut down quite a bit. So once I get the lower mounts made, tacked in place, so that the shock has a place to bolt in at least, then I'm going to set the axle at uh, full bump and see where the top of the shock wants to be. Let me get these uh, mounts made. All right, made up two identical plates to. Uh, bolt up to these uh, things. I offset them a little bit. I put more length towards the front tire. That way uh, I got more to build off of.
So both sides will look just like this. All right, so I got uh, these mounts slit, snug with the bolt, and I got my little spacer here on both. So those are ready to go. I got both plates shined up, or cleaned up, I mean, ready to tack on. Those are bolted in place. So really the easiest way to do this is set the truck or the axle up at your full bump. So I bumped it fully out, which the first point of contact is the tie rod bar to the pitman arm tie rod. So I bumped it out and I have an inch. Maybe I'll do an inch and a half. So that'll be the ultimate, as close to anything can bump out in this truck. Um, track bar is clear of the top of the diff cover. And I just love how all these, the drag link and track bar are just identical. It's just perfect. Um, that's off, but everything's zeroed out 100% level. All right, so I started on the driver's side as far as locating the shock. I got it where I wanted it. And then I'm able to utilize all three bolts. And what I did here is I put a 5.8 socket over that head and a 5.8 box wrench on that one. That way I knew I had plenty of room back and forth because I really want to utilize both those bolt holes. So I got plenty of room to take the mount off once it's welded. I'll just make sure to not weld too tight where those are located. So these are tacked in place. So then I took some measurements off this mount to locate the passenger side as dead on as possible. So here you'll see I got the uh, socket on this one and the box wrench on this one. So there's plenty of room once the shock's removed to zip these brackets off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these brackets off, put them on the bench, and finish welding these up. And then I'll go ahead and shape the plates so they look nice. So let me get started. All right, I got both brackets uh, shaped up. Look a lot better. Obviously, they're not painted yet. That's the passenger side and driver's side. So actually, both of them together, and then I was able to basically shape them at the same time. So worked out really nice. <clears throat> so let's start the uh, upper shock towers. So first step is to uh, weld in these tabs, again, from Barnes four-wheel drive. Um, the tabs always come separate. That way you can weld them in place for whatever width your shock mounting is. So I got them mocked up with uh, that little shim washer on both, getting them all centered, tack them in place, weld them up, and then the shock towers will be ready to uh, start mocking up on the frame. That's gonna be a little bit tricky. So let's get to it. There, I got both towers welded up. It's always a pain to get inside, but worked out good. So the uh, top of the ORI strut is pretty wide. So I did uh, I did clearance these out just a tad more. Everything's good now. I put them in here and up, down, left, right. Nothing's touching now, so that's good. So I got both shocks, um, I wrapped them so I don't get them all scratched up. Got them both uh, pinned in the bottom shock mounts. Now I'm going to start on the driver's side here and uh, get this stuff going. So I got the axle set up again at full bump, or the bump that I want. Completely horizontal with a little safety space there about an inch. Um, so everything looks good. I'm gonna verify the frames level and you know all the way through and then start mocking some stuff up. And then real quick I did uh I did get those new tubes made for the upper links. 
previous video I showed how I kind of cut them and butt welded some more together to come up with a longer longer link but uh got the actual full links in there now so everything's looking really good all right well that took some time the only thing bad about these frames is that uh, it's very hard to find anything symmetrical on either side the rear not so bad the rear will be uh, fairly easy from uh, the second body mount back both sides are the same well pretty much <laughs> I forgot this side's got this little little whoop you doing it but it will be easier than the front so I got both shock towers mocked up so I'm gonna do some uh, tweaking on them cleaning up and tying them in uh, a little bit better all right I got both shock front shock towers finally this took some time there's no there's nothing really equal side to side on the front of these frames <laughs> what a pain so i started with the driver's side one first got that all set um and then i moved over to the passenger side like i said in the earlier in the video and uh the side was fair was a little bit easier than this side still uh still a pain um this side, obviously, the steering, the steering box, track bar, the way this frame humps out is this side's issue. Uh, on the passenger side, it's the headers. So I already did remove the header, put it back in place just to make sure. Not a problem. So now to move on. So these shock towers come you know x amount long and they already have kind of a cutout for a frame notch but what frame was that designed for who knows so basically i'm going to cut these off square all four legs on each side two legs per side and then i'm going to go through measure and and make my own triangular gussets to complete that side of the tower so not a big deal, it ain't gonna change anything. But uh, happy with it, looks good. All my degrees are within like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Um, again, this is all set up at, uh, at full bump. So, let's move on. And that's with the RIs in place. Looks super sweet. Just looks so mean. Plenty of clearance around everything. I mean, so much room. Again, a full width axle just really has so many advantages. Um, it just creates so much more clearance for stuff. You know, if I was doing the same type of setup with a narrow axle, this track bar bracket would be in the way. So it would be a, probably a different setup. But anyway. I will uh, go ahead and finish welding everything, finish up those gussets I talked about, and uh, this will be pretty much done as far as the front shock towers. All right, so I kind of decided there's really no point <clears throat> in me, you know, welding and putting on four more gussets just to record that. I mean, it's kind of redundant. I'll show that down the road with the other stuff. So I'm going to call this video good. Um, I already kind of started on the rear shock tower stuff. Got a video going for that. Just picked up Jeff's 40s. Um, he had a guy that, uh, I guess he hauls vehicles back and forth. Anyway, the guy was in town within an hour of Jeff, so Jeff was able to have him bring these tires back along with a brand new gas tank and a whole bunch of wiring stuff. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, 40s mounted up on the bead locks. That way those are all set and complete because it'll be very soon where i can put the wheels and tires on the chassis it will be a roller soon so i'm gonna go ahead and uh i'm gonna end the video right here like i said let me get these uh rims and tires mounted up um call this video good 
rear rear shock towers and mounts video will be up next and then probably at the end of that video i'll do uh, an overall walk around of basically a rolling chassis so stay tuned as always like subscribe comment and share so appreciate it guys uh see you on the next one